Happy September. September already. When did that happen? <laughs> Today. <laughs> I know. I know. So, um, welcome, and um, we're excited to be unboxing Zest today, which is our, our new line for the fall from Benetex. We don't typically do the seasonal um, fall, as in fall line has to be fall colors, because... Right. People don't always necessarily buy it in that So season, just because so. it's fall doesn't mean it's not a... It's yeah, it's definitely you'll not see, fall colors. You'll see, you'll see. Definitely not fall colors. Um, but a couple of housekeeping things um, before we start unboxing. And I want to kind of explain why we designed this line and how. So you'll um, you'll uh, understand that as yeah, well. Our goal, I think you know us probably a little bit now, our goal is always to share things with you, things being fabric, but also the ideas behind it. So you understand what the possibilities are. Well, and also you can understand how to best use the fabric. But our fabric and those that you have already. Yeah. So a couple of things. Um, we'll be showing you some new patterns today. Eventually, we have this wonderful feature to our website that Bill has developed called the Pattern Finder. And I'm adding our new patterns will be uh, probably within a couple hours will be up on there. One thing that's helpful for you to understand, because we get this question, I'd say about four times a week. <laughs> um, so when when we do a free pattern, it is typically a free pattern it, um, for the fabric manufacturer to, it's a promotional mm -hmm. fabric. So it's kind of like um, a sale or a something, promotional, promotional yeah. thing. Um, it, it is free for a period of time, and, um, but it isn't always free. So um, typically we keep our free patterns in circulation for the time that the fabric line yeah, is being for provided. a year or so and but it might pop up later in the calendar or might pop up mm -hmm. later in um, some other publication so. um, but uh, if I, I get calls a lot of oh it was a free pattern eight years ago why isn't a free pattern anymore and it's it's, it's just helpful for you to understand that if you want uh, that free patterns at some point, we have to be able to make a living. <laughs> we have to pay our but bills. Also, also they, they, they exist in conjunction with a current line. Exactly. So when the line's not available, then it, it has a different different life. Exactly. So do you want... So, so we're going to... Um, we will have... We'll show you the free pattern. And it uh, typically, um, we those free patterns are hosted on Better Texas site. But we put links on our, yeah. our site to get you there. So yeah, so today, this morning, we've got kind of talking about some design concepts, an unboxing, and... Um, I was yeah. finishing the housekeeping. Oh, you're doing all the yes. housekeeping. Yeah, <clears throat> I, thought you, no, I thought you were done. I thought you were done. Calendars. Um, we are sold out of our um, calendars. Your local quilt shop um, can get them. Other online sources can get them. Um, there are 12 patterns in there, and we hope you love it. Yeah. Um, but it's a difficult thing for us <laughs> to ship, and it's costly and that sort of thing. So we only ship so many. Plus, with calendars, you place your order months ahead of time, and if you want more, they're usually sold out by then from the supplier. So we've we've gone through our allocation. But we there, were, there are others we were out sold there. out in three days, but <laughs> other people can. Uh, you can get them, them, and your local quilt shop should have them. They can order them through Brewer, I know. So, okay, so right. um, let's dig into, oh, the palette of the month. Yes, that, that's okay. all. Are you want to do that first? Yeah, let's do that first. So it's September, and as you know, every month we've come up with a new palette of 10 Benetech Superior Solids, and we're kind of geeks about it. We really love it, looking at what will be new and what will be inspiring and also we didn't we want it to be different than from previous months so so every month go is ahead different. and introduce it all right so it is oh i've got to figure out how to get the light just right if you hold it like that there you go uh, we get the top one but it's the vineyard palette and it has beautiful olives and rich greens and deep kind of root browns and plums and 
for us. This is this is actually pretty seasonal. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just interrupt you for a second. So the people who are saying that we're cutting you out, we have a hard wire fiber connection. So if we're cutting out that it is on your end, yes. um, we should, um, I'm sorry that that happens, but um, is there yeah. something you want to check? No, it seems, um, it, it but we are hardwired into fiber, fiber here. So, so, um, so if you have any cutting out, either you might try refreshing or restarting, but it, um, it's, it's unlikely to 99 percent chance it's on your end so right. so, so back um, we're gonna keep going and I'm, I'm i'm sorry that there's nothing we can do to help you with that yeah. problem so the vineyard bundle as i was saying has all these kind of earthy browns greens and grape colors and so it is it is seasonal but it's also seasonless it should look good year round it's kind of an unexpected palette also in that it's um it's got purples and greens and browns in it and there's actually one blue in there also so Which, this is come to me like it's a cozy um but still bright and yeah you know earthy pattern it, so. to me it's a blue that reminds me of kind of muscat grapes conquered grapes that deep color so there we go all 10 of the solids yeah so uh, let me deal deal with this uh the cutting out thing again um uh we are able to see our on our end whether we're having problems and it's just check. part of the um the uh issue it's part of the um what do you call it the uh way that facebook works yeah so um i'm not <laughs> I, I wish I could do something about yeah. that, but we can see on our end that our transmission is fine. Yeah. So uh, we're going to keep going, and if you are having difficulty, feel free to watch on YouTube yeah. or on Facebook later. Later but in the day, we or can tomorrow. see our transmission yeah. level here, and it's fine. It's fine. So, so I'm sorry it's not working. For yeah, you. it's always frustrating for. Yes. Yeah, we want you to be able to see. Yes. So that's Vineyard, and yes. if you go to the um palette of there's a in our shop there's a palette of the month link and it's actually really fun now to see this is our ninth month to see the whole collection coming together and we try really hard to make sure that um the uh that there isn't there aren't a lot of duplicates so we're trying to have each month be very different um for 90 percent unique you know there are a couple repetitions but, okay. but it's generally great so um, before we unbox Zest, we wanted to talk about uh, black, and, Zest has some black and white fabrics in it. And we wanted to talk about why we designed this line as we did and how when we show you the line, we hope that you'll um, understand best how to use it. And so we have some two examples um, to talk about roles of fabric in the in a quilt and and that's something that we've talked about on here before in terms of uh when you're making a quilt and assembling a palette it's not just about the fabric but the role of each fabric in the quilt and you and determine that is that is the quilt maker you determine the fun. what roles you want so for example in our intrepid traveler quilt we had two roles here we had the multicolored um, trapezoid, trapezoid here. And then we had this chambray um, piece. And that piece is repeated. And the pattern and the joy of the pattern making is in deciding which fabrics go in which role. However, you can imagine that if some of these blocks had this print in this um, this smaller, thinner print, it would disrupt the pattern of the piecing. Do, does everybody understand that? That so when you are um, when you are thinking about, you know, typically the the pattern designer calls it out that you know this needs one fabric and then this is another fabric. But as the person making the pattern, you can also make choices about 
you know, substituting things. But when you have a repeating element, this that's one fabric or um, that's repeated over and over, that's what helps you see the pattern of the quilt. It gives structure to the design. Exactly. And visual um, and kind of clarity as to, you, you know, you see the, the rhythm more, of the... The more eight. you see... You really can see over and over that thin chambray gray trapezoid repeating and how because there's that structure, you're able to use a lot of different pretty extravagant prints here without it getting overwhelming. Because it's very clear that that there is there are two roles here. There's this kind of what looks like almost a background because your eye sees it repeated and then these other multicolored prints. So that is one example of a quilt with two rolls in it. So, and that's from Rediscovering Your Stash. This is the Friends All Around quilt, where what we could have done is in this inner circle here, we could have made that a black and white fabric, for example, or these corner pieces, we could have made that a black and white fabric. but. I had a lot of comments on social media about people frustrated that they can't figure out why they, how to use black and white prints with their multicolored prints. And that is because they behave differently in a quilt. Do you want to talk about the brightness? Well, black and white prints do behave differently for a couple of reasons. If you just had one arc in here that was black and white, it would leap out for a variety of reasons. One, white is just the bright, it's, it's the brightest value you can have. There's nothing lighter in value than white. And specifically, if you have a white and black print, that is going to have the highest amount of contrast within the fabric itself. Black is as dark as you can get, white is as light as you can get, which makes black and white prints kind of sparkly, eye-catching, vibrant, they're attention getters. So if you look at this quilt, there are a, a lot of design decisions going on. For instance, the background corners are all darker values and they're all tone on tones. They're not solids, they're blue and black or plum and eggplant. So they recede into the background. All of the half arcs and quarter circles are either multicolored or they're larger scale prints but they all are you know, very colorful. But they're all similar in value. They're, all they're, similar they're in value. They're not super darks and they're not super lights and there's no white in them. So for example, with if you wanted, the reason that you can't, you can't kind of intersperse black and white, and again, let, let's be sort of sidebar, this is not a quilt police thing. No. This is just a design intention thing. No. If you have a design that you want to do that, do that. But if you're wondering why it looks choppy, if you mix in a black and white print with a bunch of multicolored prints, that's why. Because the rolls, this is, this is all doing the same thing. And if you put a super high contrast print in the middle of that, it, it's the thing that you're going to see most. It's startling. It, it is. And you might want that. Yeah. But most of the time when people struggle with using black and white fabrics, it's because they're treating them the same way. The same. And, and they're putting them in the same role as the multicolored prints. Exactly. So, um, so what we wanted to do with Zest was to give you some black and white prints. And a whole lot of color. And a whole lot of color. But to show you projects that will help you integrate them so you don't see them, so you don't yeah. get frustrated using them. Well, so we'll, and, okay. and I actually want to quickly go back to, um, Sue, your comment that you're eating lunch on an Intrepid Traveler placemat. That must look great. <laughs> I love that. And, and earlier there was a comment about with the Intrepid Traveler with those slim gray trapezoids that they do provide continuity. That's a very good way of thinking yeah. of it. And if you have a quilt like this and you just had one or two random black and white prints, that would be a lack of continuity. That would be one of the 
things that would be a little jarring. So well, just... something I was reading many years ago was talking about how, you know, our eyes and our brains are through evolution are, are trained to spot patterns. And there's a, what is desirable and beautiful is seeing the patterns. And when you can't see the patterns, that can sometimes be stressful or, yeah. or it, it's uncomfortable. And so when you, can you grab that quilt, please? Which the? Either, either one. Okay. So part of, you know, fabric selection is, is showing the person who's looking at it, making it easy for them to see the pattern. And it doesn't, and it can be sense? subtle, it can be subtle, but it needs to make sense yeah. in order for them to, for it to feel right. beautiful. And, and having variation within that, that expectation gives it interest. Um, but, you know, our brains have also developed to, to spot things that are different. Right. It's like, so you can see the red ripe apple on the tree, it's different. And that's one of the reasons why if you pick one fabric that's dissimilar from others, it feels like it has a different role and it stands out and you gravitate towards it when you might not want to. Like you want to know where the apple is when you're hungry. But the thing but... is, if you, if you decide, for example, in this quilt that you wanted the centers to be black and white, then you want all of the centers to be black and white, or you want it there to be a rhythm to it that looks logical. Yeah. But for, for black and white fabrics to just appear here and there, Kind of a willy nilly can be. It, it's from the distance. All you see is the black and white, and you're, and then you'll be like, "Why is that there? It doesn't yeah. seem to make sense." Mm -hmm. Okay, so should we unbox and? Yes. <laughs> okay. Open up. Always the fun time. So um, these are shipping to Zest is um, printed by Benertex, and it's shipping to stores right now. So your local quilt and shop will have it, and it is on our, our website. website as oh, of yes. 30 minutes ago. Yes. <laughs> I don't have enough room. Oh, hold on. There we go. Okay. okay. So this is the first. So we have a box of colorful fabrics here. And I'm going to... Are you going to st want to stack them behind us, maybe? Sure. As we go. I'm going to slide the... Oh, okay. A plastic mm. one. Okay. So this is the... Me... Um, hold on. Where, where's that... If you can move your hand, please. This is the Gusto, the Magenta Gusto print. It's a stripe, but it's a subtle stripe. Um, so it's ever so slightly directional. And it has that nice little curve. It's kind of right. tubular looking. So it's a little bit. And so it, it's, it's not, it's very interesting because the stripe runs in one direction, but then it has these curved shapes in the other so it's not like a traditional stripe at all it's, but it's, i think it's gonna i think it's gonna make a fantastic binding for some, oh. at some point somebody's gonna make a binding of it and that's great so let's look at all the colorways of gusto okay so we thought about this whole line is it's like zest was the idea of you know in a drink or in baking or whatever the idea of like what what a a little, you know, piece, slice of lime does in a drink, for example, or... Um, so it might be like the little bits of unexpected color that this is predominantly exactly. blues, but it actually has some kind of red violet and it has some citron green in it and actually... Um, yellow. Uh, yellow. Too. Oh, ye yeah. yellow too. It's got yeah. great variety so, at the bottom. Oh, there. is that the other Sorry. one? Yeah. Okay, hold on. There's another so we, one. So we, we have multiple boxes. We have multiple boxes. So she's going to pull out one more this to is show the, you the three color ways of Gusto. Oh, this is the... <laughs> Actually, oh, it's fun to take the, the uh, cellophane off. This is the Azure. So this is the Azure. And again, there's a lot of color within these. One of the things that's a little different is you have... Uh, some desaturated and saturated colors within it. They have a real depth and richness. Yeah. And one of the goals with this Gusto print is if you cut a two square inch piece, it's a nice color. If you cut a an eight square inch piece, it's also or eight by eight piece. It's it's interesting. So it works yeah. at different scales. 
Okay, and again with the, um, the people posting about their internet going out, our internet is stable, we're connected through fiber, so um, I'm sorry, but it, it is on your end, and I wish there was something we could do to help yeah. you. But. And I think uh, there was a comment earlier, I think Sue made, the, I'm not sure, made, someone made the comment that's really useful if you're watching something streaming. If you back up your playhead just a bit, it helps your internet buffer, and you may be a minute behind everyone else, but at least you usually get a better stream. Okay, okay, let's go with um, The Wonder print. Oh. I love this one. This okay. was one of the first ones we designed for this line. This is, um, we wanted some, something that would be uh, coral and um, kind of raspberry and peachy, but that, that wasn't a wimpy fabric. Oh, it's not wimpy. <laughs> what I love about this fabric also is that it can, um, it's not directional and it looks like it's going, you know, you can cut it up into somewhat small pieces and it still looks interesting, but it would be great as a quilt backing also. Yeah, and we did this in three different colorways, each of which has you know, I I, love a these. lot of different yeah. um, inks in it. Well, and I think this is also um, a good time to mention that yeah. this is our first digitally printed line um you may or may not know that the um the quilting fabric world is moving aggressively toward more digital Very printing quickly. some fa some fa fabric companies are doing as much as 80 percent of their lines digitally and m most are doing um uh at least half of their lines digitally and what that means it it, it used to be that digital printing was lower quality it's but great now. It, 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 it gives us some opportunities to design differently because the technical um, variances are different. Um, but it also gives us the ability to use more colors in a print and to have a larger uh, repeat size. So there are lots of um, benefits right. to it. We, we've been kind of watching and working with digital printing for years now but this is our first full line. And one of the reasons we're doing this now is the quality is absolutely on par with screen printing. And not only that, but I think what I'm, one of the things I'm most excited about is just environmentally, screen printing uses just incredible amounts of water to do. And digital printing is just a fraction of that. So, I think in the long term, uh, I, I, I was not happy with it. Even two years ago, it wasn't fully there. But now, you know, we test everything. We wash it. We, and the color fastness is fantastic. This, you know, I washed a piece of absolutely everything from this line in our front loader, standard way, and with, as always, with color catchers, and zero bleeding. No, I mean, it's just, it's, it behaves right now like really good printing. And at least Banner Texas does. I mean. One of the things that's also that you might not know is that with digital printing like this, we don't have to design as carefully with trapping lines, which is an outline um, for, um, to make sure that one ink doesn't bleed onto the next ink. So it gives us a little bit, um, if you can see, can you hold it up? There are no outlines um, on this print mm -hmm. and there's no bleeding. So it's right. a little Ble bit- Bleeding, not, not like red bleeding, overlap white bleeding. Overlap of colors in right. the production In, in the process. past, if you wanted light, a yellow next to a red, you would actually have to have the yellow bigger than the red and underneath. And sometimes they would overlap a little bit and you get a ring of orange that wasn't necessarily part of the original intention. It was just a byproduct of printing. And this, you can have uh, colors absolutely touch with no overlap. You can have an infinite number of colors, whereas before most printing was limited to about 16 colors. And complementary colors were often difficult. So if you had a blue um, color next to a, an orange color, you would get like a little brown 
you know, overlap between them that, you know, was just a little bit limiting. So this is my favorite. I love this one. And what is this actually? <laughs> yes, this is Gusto. Oh, this is the um, uh, Orchid. The Orchid. A wonder, wonder, wonder. A wonder, wonder, wonder in Orchid. A wonder print, yes. Okay, so let me... So that is, These are heavy. <laughs> yes, the wonder, wonder prints. Love them. All right. So this is the biggest scale. The wonder print is the biggest scale print in the um, in the line, and uh, these are geometrics. A lot of them, and so what we wanted to do is have it smaller in scale, so it would be more flexible for you in your sewing. Okay. Okay. And so the print is this is, this is the spark. spark. Yes, and this. What, can you move your hand? I can't remember. The <laughs> this is the Glade um, Spark print, and we, um, it, it has a sparkle to oh, it. Oh, it has a I great like. sparkle. So I'll put that there. And oh, there window is. looks like stained glass. Oh, interesting. Oh, nice. Yes. It's very modern. So. Yeah, we really wanted these, and this is the beauty of the digital printing is that we can, you know, we can use, normally we were limited to what, 17 colors, and some of these have 30 colors in them, so... Yes, so this is also Spark, and it's the other end. Okay. I can't remember the name of the colorway. Rose, yeah, because we designed these like nine months ago, so. <laughs> We've already designed an, <laughs> and another, another we have, entire line. We have design. other lines in, in process. And this is the one, I, I was saying, I think this is going to be. Uh, I, I think this is going to sell out. Well, I mean, actually. You never know. I think we can say, they've already told us that they're doing a second printing. Yeah, yeah they're already. So. They've already reordered. They've already reordered. And it's not even in shops yet. So this is the Spark Prism. And this is, and you can do it either way. Yeah. But you can see that little bit of white in there. And this just, talk about playing well with others. It's got such a great range of color in it. So and, these are some of the, um, the smaller scale prints, but again, multicolored and we it's so nice that we can use so many colors in a print because it then it doesn't look like it doesn't repeat as much when you have a, a lot of uh yardage a on. lot of variety and we have 18 different fabrics in this collection so, so this is the merriment ice yeah. and it's a wonderful blue okay I'm hold this up get close. closer but it's got lots of different colors in it it's not a polka dot which is nice because it, it, it looks like it's got a little bit more interest than just a two color polka dot. And it's kind of fun running your finger along the interconnected dots. And so we did this in three color ways. This, that one, and then next is a uh, Celadon. Yeah, this is the yeah, Celadon Merriment. Mm -hmm. And again, lots of color in the infill of those dots. Yes. And, then we and the occasional lines, Marianne says the occasional lines oh, in between. Yes. That's exactly it. Having occasional is the key. Occasional, then it doesn't look quite as stiff. It, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's not as a, a predictable pattern. It has it has little movement in it. But that bigger repeat size of digital printing gives us the ability to make it look a little less stiff in that way. Okay. So, so this is the chroma colorway. And very multicolored. Very, very multicolored. It looks even more multicolored in person than it does on the screen. Yeah. How do you name your fabric lines? You know, that's a I am um I seem to be the person in charge of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, that's why I'm looking at her. <laughs> and um usually there's a lot of thought that goes into it. And it's funny because I saw in um an American patchwork and quilting post the other day asking whether people cared about the names and they said no absolutely not and I thought well hold on we baby. care I, I thought I'm spending a lot of time <laughs> on something nobody cares about but to but, me um it was it it was I think it has to convey it has to convey a message that the fabrics convey. So we have a, an idea for the line of what we want it to evoke in you in terms of the quilts you want to make and, you know, whether like vin the vintage line that we had was really about kind of, um, kind of comfort, comfort and, 
a nostalgia a little and familiarity a little yeah, bit yeah and so that was named that was very different in terms of the naming than this which is really playful and happy um and was it more or less oh. time consuming designing digitally um it was designed the uh i, I wouldn't say it was more or, or less, less time consuming it just took us a while and there was there are some limitations to it so for example one of the fabrics that we designed as shades of gray um, the digital printing doesn't like gray as much because it, it it starts to look a little more a little grainy or a little pixelated so we had to scrap that entire colorway we have large blocks of gray small bits work but really even, well even in the spark fabric yeah. this one was originally um shades of gray and we, we weren't happy with it we weren't happy with it better text wasn't happy with it so we recolored this and loved now it. i love it so but, you know, yeah i i think it's not a straight linear process designing fabric i i, I think each line has limitations and this actually goes back to the naming i don't know how much the name is important to you but for us not at all apparently yeah, <laughs> people, but for for us i think for designers in general very often you go back and forth between the verbal and the visual and if you can name something sometimes that gives you something to work towards a, a feeling a mood uh like zest is just inherently like you smile it, it's a positive it would have been different if we had named it playground yeah or something like that you know that then it becomes much more sort of juvenile juvenile you know? and so so that word it also relates to the the technical limitations because we've designed fabrics wovens that are produced they're loomed in india we have done prints that have been done in japan korea we've done digital printing every single one of those has great possibilities and real limitations so it's it's not generally it's not that one takes longer than the other but sometimes when something's new there's a learning curve actually there are things that take longer like our dreamy line had very complex that was screen printed and there was a lot of um color back issues a lot of a ton of color issues whereas um this one uh sometimes we'll we get back the tso's which are the kind of the rough drafts of the fabric and uh the colors aren't right so this one we had some that um we had some issues that we had to send back but for the most part um it printed yeah. really well so this is the spirit actually this is the chroma colorway of yeah. the spirit and wow is this going to be versatile because it it has little bits of everything yeah. in it and i think it would be not just a great backing but uh, a i don't know it has it's energetic without being loud yeah it, i, I want to look at diane's oh, okay. um comment about words have meaning yeah they really you, have Diane. meaning to me <laughs> that's why i spend so much time um thinking of the name of the line um, even the names of each design right and so for example uh you know as we were designing these um you know we might have three or four prints and then we would audition a fourth one and one of us would say that doesn't seem zesty enough <laughs> exactly you know, that doesn't seem like you you really want to have one approach to the line that carries through the colors and the names and the so, logo for so there's it. either a feeling an emotion a logic exactly all of the above that carries through them all do we have the um this is spirit chroma right uh, but uh, i was looking uh, the whether the uh, logo it's not on. It, it's not it does you don't see it quite as much it's you'll see different... it you'll see it in the next couple of days and we yeah. in our social media but bill designed a beautiful logo for it it's a little hard on the seam allowance too uh, on the cell it's a, actually a different see. different mark oh, yeah. so here is we talked about black and white are you gonna go very close black and white and gray even. it's black and white and several shades of gray 
And although they call, call it the silver colorway, it's not a metallic. It's, it's blacks, whites, and grays. Yeah. And we'll show you this in a quilt in just a little bit. This is meant to be a real workhorse, a really Absolutely. versatile black and white print that's not directional. Right. And it has a little bit of gray in it. And the little bit of gray gives it depth. And then this is the sage. So it's a little bit brighter than standard sage, sage but um, it's more kind of an apple green with multicolored. It's always tricky to get the exact colors, but we'll we'll, um, we'll have it up on our website yes. a little bit more accurately. So okay, have, so now the last three. Yeah. And let's do the blue. First. And we've kind of gone from the larger scale down to the smaller scale. Yeah, this is kind of um, so. This is zeal, and this is the bluebell. So yeah. this would be a great um, like sashing print. Now, if, if I move, it probably hurts your eyes. <laughs> Go up close. <laughs> it, it, but it's so small in scale. When you back it'll up, cut up nicely. It's it's a really nice kind of tone on top tone. This is the the deep blue and black. And actually, when you asked earlier about was digital printing harder, that was a great example. This fabric. We went through several tests mm -hmm. to really learn. So if you look up close, do you see how tiny some of the black dots are? It took all of us a while to figure out what's the ideal size. How, you know, how much does the ink spread when it hits the cotton? And it's really nice cotton. So Sue has a great question about looking at the old fabric lines on a shelf. It looks like they all were possessed. How Yay. much do you consider that? <laughs> So what we're always trying to do is figure, I mean, figure out how to, um, there are certain, uh, there are certain, you know, edges to the colors that we work with. Um, we, this is probably the brightest, um, in a while, you know, this is probably the brightest, uh, line we've had and it's very bright. Um, because we want you to be able to use it with your stash. And we have taught so many thousands of students and seen the colors that they struggle with and the colors that, that uh, inspire them. So I can pretty much, we don't stick to the same colors, but our strategy of blending colors is similar. So um, for example, if vintage, like this rosy is a lot dustier than say the uh, the pinks in this line. So this is kind of on the dustier edge However, of what we designed. There, but then there's that citron that would work great with that. We always want there to be enough overlap that you can use a, a good number of them together. And I, I think of the example in product and automotive design, if you take a company like Mercedes, which says like one of their goals is to have automobiles that last two decades because of quality. And because they know that, they take design cues from the previous 20 years, even in a new model, and integrate them. So if you have a 20-year-old car and a brand new one, you can tell they belong, even though they're radically different, they belong to the same mark, basically. But I think if you, if you looked at uh, fabrics that we designed um, 20 years ago, uh, they are, uh, they were earthier then. And part of that is dyes have changed and uh, we had to well, be... has changed. Yeah, but I think uh, the world, the quilting world was much more traditional then. So mm. we had to be a little bit more toned down uh, when we started 20 years ago. And in the last, you know, five or 10 years, certainly, um, brighter colors have been more marketable, I guess is the way to put it. So two more. So this is the um, Zest Grape. No, no, Zeal Ooh, Grape. Zeal. Sorry. And once again, it, it's kind of a deep purple with, it's actually not quite black, the overprint. It's like dark, right. dark, dark, dark purple. And then the last one, which I love, is the uh, black and white Zeal. Zebra. Z Zebra, yes. Ze zebra Zeal. Ze yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the black and white prints um, will work really well together in rolls. Um, 
and we'll give you some show you some examples okay so this so, yeah, start with straight that. away straight okay. away the free to use pattern which will be a download um it's already on our website this one is it's already on our pattern finder yeah. and our free pattern page and i have to back up here so yeah it is so you can see the rolls of the black and white so i'm going it's taking that black gray and white stripe that is consistently every other strip and the black and white is the same width of strip but if you look at this and actually i'll try to show you even more the colored fabrics change they're all different widths so you have a fair amount of continuity but then on the back there's that spark print we have that spark um it's just the prism colorway so it it ties the whites in there but you get I, I think this is really fun to do. Yeah. It's, it's a, it, the way you make this is sewing yardage of stripes, basically. Okay. So um, uh, this, it, at some point we will have kits of this on. Um, maybe even today. Maybe we'll even see. today. We'll, <laughs> we'll, see how, we'll see how that uh, that goes. But this is also a super forgiving pattern because mm -hmm. it's straight cutting straight sewing and no points to match and actually I, I will zoom in here to show you the quilting that we did on it we did basically uh continuous spirals free motion free motion that give the, the they're a nice foil to all the straight lines and there's a lot of i mean there's a lot going on in this so it adds some movement yeah. too so um, then this is also, this is the, it's super simple, super, super forgiving. I think this is the simplest pattern we've ever done and I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's all in the fabric placement. This is called um, do -si do Do you want to just hold it on okay. the side? <laughs> sure, let's do it. This is, again, one, it's one pattern piece, and but it's the placement of the fabrics and the design of the fabrics that's kind of doing the work for you. So what's interesting about this is how you get horizontal and vertical banding, kind of columns and rows, and everyone can make it differently. Yeah. And this was one where points about, do. Points matter. Points so matter. This is simple cutting. I think it's really worth pinning carefully and sewing carefully so that you can have uh, if, if your points aren't lined up, you don't get the beauty of the horizontal and vertical lines. Yeah. It'd be a little jarring. But what I, th what I love is how sometimes two fabrics kind of visually unite. Sometimes four fabrics do. Exactly. Lights and darks, greens and blues. Depending on how it's draped, it drapes really nicely. Like this is a quilt I would like to have on just right. a... a you know, on the sofa to curl up with because it you you can see it just a little bit, and when it overlaps itself, I actually like what goes on with the adjacencies. Exactly. exactly. There's a labyrinth, our labyrinth um, quilting pattern, that's uh, free motion. Actually, labyrinth. you can really see it on the back. Oh, the back is probably yeah. That's the way to see it. There can. Yeah, you can see it there, and that is. Um, uh, we did it with a light blue thread on the top, and it looks like gray on the bag, mm -hmm. right? And that was a pattern that we originally developed for a quilt called Glyphs, issue nine mm -hmm. of Modern issue Quilts Illustrated. So if that's a pattern that interests you, it's basically square spirals. And we, we have a tutorial work. for how to. In issue nine in of issue Modern nine, Quilts yeah, Illustrated. Exactly. So this will be a digital download. This is a paid digital download that is on our site and and i want to show them that we zeal make, we will make a kit the binding also okay. and how that it looks let's see where is that zebra right here oh here we go right in front of you so this is what it looks like on the bolt on the bolt and then you can see how great it looks uh, on the binding when you have just that half inch absolutely and this goes back to what weeks was talking about the role of black and whites and because there is so much color in the line 
we knew that having a black and white or black, white and gray fabric could give really strong structure to this. Right. The, the kind of A, B, A, C, A, D, A, and just the, the black and white is a constant even as the others change. Yeah, exactly. And that is really different from this quilt where th there's some white, but we didn't put the black and white right. in here because it would stand out as being too different. That it's entire a, row would just be define everything. We, we actually tried it. We looked yeah. at it and we thought this isn't going to work, but we'll look at it. And we're right. It just, it drew too much attention to itself. And you didn't get, instead of getting the different side to side and up and down views, your eye kind of got stuck on the black and white. But you can even see in this quilt why we couldn't integrate, why, we couldn't just swap out one of these colored fabrics for another black and white fabric Be yeah. because you've got the, the, the rolls are very clear in the rest of the quilt. And so the, a lot of people tell me they're, they see a line and they assume that has some black and white fabrics in it. And they assume that all of the fabrics are would equal. work equally and they can just swap them out within a quilt. And then they know it doesn't work. It doesn't look right, but they're not sure why that why? is. So, so I, I that, hope you enjoyed hope, this. And does that make sense? Yeah. I hope that's, um, okay. uh, oh, good. I, I'm glad that you, um, glad you're liking the, uh, the line. I know that. Oh, oh I was going to oh. say, oh, I also want to say, of course, we have fat quarter bundles that have the black and whites and the whole range of color in them. So exactly. these these should be up on the website already. Yes, definitely. So it has all 18 fabrics. So any other questions about black and white fabrics or, mm -hmm. you know, is it is it clear to um, the explanation about how to use them? Because I think this is a great, mm -hmm. uh, we and haven't there, talked about this. There are lots before. of, you know, we will, I'm sure, make some other things with this and, yeah. and share those as we go along. But the black and white is, it's nice to have. Yeah, or even the white background. So this is oh, the what the multicolored with the white background. You can see how much it jumps from everything else that's in the line. So you just want to make sure that when you place a fabric that's that much lighter or that has high contrast, that you're setting up a pattern in, a, in the quilt that it makes it visually it makes clear. Yeah. yeah, so. All right, well, if there are no more questions, we will, um, we will wait and see you again in October. Yeah, and but... we look forward to continuing to share. You know, we're working on lots of quilts right now, and and lines for next This year. is a good time of year for quilters. I think, you know, as it starts to get cooler, people are inside a little more and start quilting a bit more often. And I think that, that people are, are home more. They may have been away for the summer and they're ready to uh -huh. get started. And those of you who are already starting, because I've seen a few in my, um, my social media feed, we have a few Warp and Weft holiday bundles left. So if... And then that's it. Oh yeah. So if you're thinking, so we cannot reorder those. Those woven yeah. holiday bundles, whatever we have, when they're gone, they're gone. Oh, I, I do want to address that one question. Um, we will not be in um, oh. at Madison next yeah, week. Yeah, Diane so, was saying, have a great you. Wisconsin festival. Uh, we but, love that festival, but we won't be there this yes, year. Yes, we won't be doing. The, we won't be at any shows this year. So we'll be here. Yes. with you online we'll see you this way and um and we have lots of other things planned but um yeah. sadly we will not be in madison next week so uh if you get there any of you enjoy it yes but um yeah. you'll find everything that we have on our website yeah. so, so enjoy your um it's a beautiful day here i hope it is where you are too and we'll see you next month take care